Okay, Jennifer, we are live. Yay. And I just sent Yay. out the um, URL. So I'm not sure if anybody will be watching us. Uh, maybe uh, we'll have a few people tune in after the fact. But um, you know, we had a, this new URL, and hopefully um, some people will see it on the California Library's Facebook group or on the listserv. So we'll just go ahead and jump into it. My name is Helen McElary. I'm the current president of California Library Association. And Jennifer, can you introduce yourself? Well, I'm Jennifer Hello. Baker, and I'm also on the CLA board. I'm serving as secretary right now. Great. So for people who don't already know you, Jennifer, you're on the CLA board, but right now you're not working as a librarian. So just really quickly, what's your background? Um, well, I've been a librarian now for uh, math, okay, a while, <laughs> a couple decades, and I've worked at libraries for about 26, going on 27 years. I uh, started out in Texas, uh, completed my uh, MLS from Texas Women's University back in 1995, and have been. Uh, Gosh, I worked in children's services for many years at a municipal library there in Texas, then moved to California and worked at the Fresno County Library and children's services as well, then moved to Solano County Library, I was there for a few years working as a supervisor, and then spent seven and a half years as the director of the St. Helena Public Library, and then most recently now I work for our local school district here in Napa. I'm in the Communications and Community Engagement Division of the Napa Valley Unified School District. So in addition to all of that, you also recently ran um, for community college trustee in your local community and you defeated an incumbent who was well supported. What made you decide to run for that position? Well. Um, while living here in Napa, when I was still working up in St. Helena, I went through a program called Leadership Napa Valley, and which is a local program where they select 30 individuals in the community to go through. Um, it's a, a year-long program where you learn different things about the community, different aspects. Each month you learn something different, and then you do a project together in kind of a practicum group. And uh, it was just a really fun program, but also really gave me an opportunity to see some of the different um, aspects of not just Napa, but you know communities in general and how they work. But I knew after finishing that program that I really wanted to do something that was gave back to the community, but wasn't specifically libraries. And so I had already kind of had my ear to the ground for different opportunities and had. After, shortly after leaving St. Helena, I ran into a friend of mine, actually he wasn't really a friend at the time, he was more of an acquaintance, um, who was serving on one of our local school boards. And I started talking to him about it. He knew I had just completed l and at Leadership Napa Valley. And, um, and so he, uh, he introduced me to someone who was serving on the Board of Trustees for the college, and uh, we just kind of started chatting about it. And there was, we knew that there was a position going to be open for re-election in the 2016. Um, uh, well, same thing that where where Trump got elected. So, anyway, <laughs> so anyway, this was this was about a year and a half prior to that, though we were having this conversation. And so I was just kind of thinking about it, and at, and then I got the job at the school district was kind of getting to know that position and in the meantime just kind of just kept hearing and thinking about it and decided last summer uh, I guess about May or June just decided yeah I was gonna go for it and so um, put my name out there in July and then hit the, hit the pavement to start campaigning <laughs> and you had a campaign manager who you were working with how did you get your campaign manager and how did they help you manage uh, your campaign throughout the process the person, and when did you start working with them, actually? The, the person who ended up serving as my campaign manager was the person who I, who I had originally talked with, the, um, the gentleman who was working on the school board um, in one of our neighboring communities. And he had also previously served as a 
um, student trustee on the board there at the college, and I knew that he had done some work with um, a gentleman who was running for state. I, uh, I don't think it was senator. I think it was a congresswoman position at the state level. Um, so he had some experience, but mostly I just knew him as kind of a grassroots activist. And so I knew he had kind of that um, feel for things. And so he and I had talked about it. He volunteered to serve as my campaign manager. And so primarily what he did, I mean, I don't really know what a, what a campaign manager really does, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'm sure like in a big election, that person would have a much more very defined, specific role. Um, for this campaign, primarily what he did was just kind of keep me abreast of what was coming next, you know, what to, what to expect, what we should be doing, kind of a timeline. And we, we based our strategy on the strategy that he had used um, in a couple of other small town type um, uh, campaigns that had been successful as well. So I'm sure there are plenty of other ways to do it. The way we did it worked for us. And you've shared with me that you really had an, um, a huge uphill battle. The person you were running against was an incumbent. They had endorsements from many other uh, elected officials. Um, and yet you you won the election. What do you think accounts for that? What what kind of tipped the scales in your direction? And it, if I remember, it was only by you know what a few hundred votes. Yeah, there. Well, it's a small it's a small area, so it was only a few hundred votes. I think it was I think in total it was about six percent that I ended up winning by. Um, and we did have a third candidate that. Hold 25% uh, of the votes. Um, so the 6% that I won with was just over 40%. Um, so yeah, it was uh, as far as, yeah, it was definitely uphill battle. I mean, the, the uh, person who I was running against, the incumbent who I was running against, had support up and down the community, all the way up into Washington. He uh, has a very good friend of his, a childhood friend of his that serves as our local congressman in Washington. And so he had come out um, in support of him. And then as a result, pretty much everyone down the line, all the way down to our local mayor and several people that are friends of mine um, that work at, that are in uh, local politics ended up endorsing him. So I went into this uh, race, not as an unknown, because I, I, for better or for worse, people know who I am. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> thank you, say <Saint> Helena. <laughs> so uh, I, but I didn't have um, any experience running uh, for public office or serving in public office, other as other than as an employee. Um, but I, I knew what to expect um, being on the other side of the dais, so to speak. Um, because I had been working with city councils and boards of supervisors and various groups for a long time in my career. So I had that advantage. But primarily, I'd say the main thing that tipped the scale, so to speak, for us is just going door to door and um, meeting people in their homes. We had, um, see, there were 11,000 people registered to vote in my area that I would be representing. And we um, crunched numbers. We got lists from the local register of voters, who, who were the registered voters, who, how did they vote, when did they vote, and then we really strategized who we were going to talk to and when. And we uh, had a very, very small team of core volunteers. And we just went out door to door. Every, I spent about 20 hours a week for um, three months, so, and we went to well over 5,000 houses, I know. I, I know I personally knocked on at least 3,000 doors. <laughs> so it was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a lot of work, and I was following you on um, Instagram and looking at the pictures that you were taking on the campaign trail as you were knocking on all of those doors and enjoyed seeing, um, seeing those. Um, you just brought up kind of the way that um, 
uh, you have interacted with Board of Supervisors and City Council members throughout your career as being um, a, a positive thing in terms of um, you know now being on the other side and campaigning. What are the other things that, as a librarian, uh, that you that you learned in your professional career that helped you um, run for this office? Well, definitely just being organized um, made a big difference. <laughs> um, uh, and then learning how to stay on topic with something, learning it mess the messaging work that I've helped with with CLA and also with just libraries in general. Um, kind of um, one of the things that I would do when I would go to the, you know door to door and I knock on the door. Um, I don't remember if it's a Harwood thing or if it's Zingerman's or something. Anyway, but there's something along the road um, as I was working as an administrator that I really hit upon with, and again, not not me personally, but just started using from other people, is really trying to figure out what it is that an individual wants and an individual means, and then figuring out how the library can help that person, that individual, or that community achieve what they want to do collectively or individually, that it wasn't just about the library, it wasn't just about me, it wasn't just about the college, it was about the person I was talking to. And so when I would go door to door, one of the things I would do is, you know, I'd, I'd knock on the door, I'd introduce myself, go through my little 10 second spiel, and then assuming that they hadn't already slammed the door in my face, <laughs> I would then at that point say, so where, I, what is your connection to the college? And um, and everybody had an answer, even if it was, oh, I don't have one. That was their answer. <laughs> they would say, or they say, oh, you know, I went to school there. My kids go to school there. I have a friend that teaches there. You know, they're, they're, it's there. Everyone in this community is somehow or another attached to the to the community college. And if any at any time somebody said, I don't have a connection, I would say, well, actually, you do because you pay property tax. And so because you pay property taxes, a percentage of what you're paying goes to support the college. So you absolutely have a connection to the college that you just don't know about. And so by bridging that and giving them a reason to care, I um, hopefully gave them a reason to think about it when they went to vote. Um, the other thing that I really, I could say was helpful from working from a library perspective when it came to campaigning was knowing how to work with limited resources because <laughs> we had very, very little money. We, we I think our total campaign budget was less than $5,000. About half of that was money that my husband and I put in personally and the rest of it was money that we raised um, through friends and uh, and local local groups. But so we, you know, we had to be very, uh, judicious about how we were going to spend it, where we were going to spend it, really looking for the best return on investment when we were planning to use money, you know, were we going to do a mail, or were we going to do um, the things that we could pass out at events, were we going to do things where we paid for robocalls or Facebook ads, because we couldn't afford to do it all. And so we had to really decide, do our research and figure out where were we going to get the biggest thing for our buck. My cat's playing with the toy, so. <laughs> I keep waiting for your cat to jump up onto the little, um, what do you I'm call that here. thing? Behind you, yeah, the little cat tower. <laughs> he might, you never know. If he does, I'll, I'll be sure and point it out. <laughs> um, so, were, were there any things that you really disliked about running for office? That you just mentioned getting the door slammed in your face. Did that actually happen? I only had it happen like maybe I think three times total. I mean, which isn't bad for going to three thousand doors, <laughs> but it was zero one percent. Yeah, <laughs> but it was definitely um, uncomfortable at least the first uh, few days, and really kind of getting that patter down and knowing, uh, you know that I had to smile and be friendly even when I felt really bad. I mean, there, there were a few Saturdays, I remember, where I was just like, I do not want to do this. I remember one day it was well over 100 degrees, and I had some kind of a stomach bug, and just thinking, OK, if I just can get out the door, I'll be fine. And then it was, OK, if I can get past this first hill, I'll be fine. And then at one point, I think I just laid down on the sidewalk 
for a little while. And, but then, you know, after a while, you just kind of keep up and keep, get up and keep going. But I think overall, um, the main, ironically, the main thing that I truly did not enjoy was the politics of it. Um, I did not expect that running for what felt like a really small position, a small local position, would become such a pivot point for so many people, um, especially given that this was a, um, in the midst of a national election that was drawing so much attention and a lot of other things that were going on for it. This one to become, this one position in our small community to become such a, um, just become so controversial in a weird way. And a lot of it had to do with people. I, I would, at one point I was misquoted in the paper and another time I, would, I had somebody that just outright lied about something I had said. And, and what, ha what would happen is that whole fake news thing was happening. Somebody would hear it one place and then they would start spinning it. And next thing you know, we were hearing it from four different places. And then it's like, okay, where did it even start? And then how do you nip that in the bud? So it was really hard to not get discouraged um, when that was happening. And also not to get uh, into, not to let it, not to take it personally. It was very hard not to take it personally a lot, a lot of the time. And then having to really, again and again, remember that I needed to stay focused, stay on message. There was a lot of just a personal kind of um, knee-jerk reaction where you wanted to just hunt down that person and set it right, or get them to take it back, or say, or to print a retraction, or, or to do something that was going to do, to um, to counter whatever they were saying. But after spending, we actually did spin our wheels quite a bit for a couple of weeks on something like that. And after a while, it just was like, you know, all the only thing we're doing here is feeding the beast. Where you know, by by continuing to try to rectify something, we are we are at the same time shedding, you know, continue, continuing to shine the light on an issue that really is a non-issue. And so, at one point, we just decided we're not going to keep working on that. I just said I want I want to focus on. The, you know, let's not worry about what the paper says. Let's spend our energy going door to door. Let's, let's spend our energy on doing something positive and, and continuing with our message rather than getting dragged down into the mud. And so, but that was hard. It, it, you didn't want to waste a lot of energy. Um, but it was, you know, it was, I, I did enjoy going and talking to people. Any opportunity when I had to do that, even when I disagreed with somebody, when I was talking with them, I always really enjoyed having that conversation. So I just really tried to focus on that more than anything. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Just because I, I'm so exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I am an interesting uh, character. I'm an um, I'm an extrovert that suffers from social anxiety. <laughs> so, so I, you know, once I get past that 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 oh my god, I'm gonna die moment, I, I really enjoy myself. <laughs> so now that you um have been through this campaign, you are now serving on this board for a few months. What lessons can you share with those of us who are still working in libraries from the other side? Um, it, it, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I don't think about that because um, I remember having this same conversation with somebody once when I was, I can't remember why I was there, but I did a, a program at the San Francisco Library many, many years ago where it was, it was, it was something to do with how to talk to people in um, leadership positions, people who were on these boards and, and how to talk to them about libraries. And I think that the one thing I w that, I, that I said then that I would still say is that Although libraries might be the thing that's like always front and center for you, it's very frequently not for anyone else. And so, is it, people would come and they'd say, you know, what? Okay, so what is what's the thing that's most important to you? And you'd be like, well, you know, this person's really concerned about the watershed, or this person's really concerned about um, the potholes and the street and whatnot. And so, it's trying to figure out, you know, what that person. Where their focus is and where their what their what's really eating up a lot of their time and causing them a lot of stress, and then figuring out how you can help them, um, so that 
they if you could be their ally, they'll end up being your ally later. So but being on the board, I don't know, it's really interesting because, you know, from the other side, there's uh, a whole, there, there's it's surprisingly a whole lot of politics going on that I would never have anticipated at, at the, even just the local small town level. Um, so as far as what, at what library people can take from it, I'm totally forgetting what your question was at this point. But um, I think you answered it, though. In, in I a way. Okay, good. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, you know, just stay, keep, it, keep in mind why that same thing is like, how do you how do you make what you what's important to you important to the person that you're talking to, whether that person is a decision maker or not? Um, you want to make certain that their needs are met. First. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, quick questions left. What advice would you give to somebody who is thinking about running for public office in their community? I guess some good walking shoes. <laughs> um, and just be prepared to spend a lot of time on it. And um, you cannot, I mean, it's interesting actually because, um, yeah, I mentioned that there had been a third candidate. That third candidate did no campaigning at all. Uh, she put her name in the, you know, in the hat. She filled out the paperwork, and her name was on the ballot. But that was it. She didn't even have a Facebook page. She didn't show up to any of the campaign forums. She didn't participate in the um, editorials with the paper. She didn't um, have any walking pieces. No signs. No mailer. Nothing. It was. But yet, she ended up pulling 25% of the vote. So I think that what that speaks to is that a lot of times people just are not paying attention. Um, so it's possible that there were people that voted for her thinking she was me because she was also female, her name started with a J, she was also in education, so it's possible that they just saw her name on the ballot and they voted for her thinking they were voting for me, or they just, her name was on the ballot and they just picked one. So that's twenty. That's one out of every four people that voted that, wow. vote, that voted for somebody who was. She may very well have been qualified. She may very well have been interested, but she didn't do anything in the uh, campaign process to 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 drive that home. So I think that you need to be aware of the fact that if you don't get out there and spread your message and be clear about what it is you want to do, people are just going to pick. They're just going to pick randomly. So you need to be sure that in order to counterbalance the effect of people just being apathetic and not or not paying attention, that you really need to go out there and make certain that people know who you are, um, know why you're running. I, you know what I said is that you need to know it is, is why are you running? Why you? Why now? Uh, you know you have to have you have to be ready to make that. Um, statement early on. I remember when I very early in I think it was first part of July, right after I had filed it might even then before I filed, I'm not sure certain, but we did like a little kind of um, kickoff party, um, invited mostly friends. And so it was a friendly audience, but then I was suddenly handed a microphone and asked, Why do you want to do this? And I just was like blah, 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 blah. And I talked for like twenty minutes. God knows what I said. But then um, <laughs> But I, there were a couple people that were there who um, I didn't know very well at the time. I've gotten to know them a little bit better now. Um, but they were former um, uh, public officials at the local level. And they came to me afterwards and said, you need to figure out how to say whatever it was you just said in 20 seconds. Yeah. And you have to be able to be on point And you have to be able to connect with people and, and do it very quickly. Because um, nobody's going to stick around and listen to you for 20 minutes, and you don't, and even if they did, you don't have time to talk to every single person for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there were there were a few people that when I was going door to door, I, where I did end up talking to them to, for 15, 20 minutes, and even though I was most of the time enjoying it, I remember thinking at the time, I have to move on. I have to move on. So that's another thing you need is an exit strategy. <laughs> Well, we the exit strategy sometimes at the public reference desk as well. So that's a librarian field that might help. <laughs> and also, you know, and also I don't think, um, you know, you want to make certain that your family supports you. Um, you want to make certain that you um, have, 
the time to put into this. You don't, you be prepared to be criticized. Um, and although um, I wouldn't say you need necessarily thick skin, what you do need to have is perspective. Um, so when you do get criticized or something that you say gets taken out of context or something that you can not get stuck down that rabbit hole, but really, um, you know, stay on, stay, stay on target, stay on message and, and keep, keep your perspective. Okay. So last question, Jennifer, um, before you ran for this elected position, you ran for an elected position, um, on the California Library Association board and you're serving as our secretary. Why did you run for CLA board and why is California Library Association important um, for librarians and other people who work in libraries in California? I love CLA and, and, and so I, um, I didn't always love CLA, I'll say that. <laughs> when I first moved to California, I um, had kind of dabbled in um, our local association. I was kind of eh, lukewarm about it, but then after a couple of years of just kind of being mealy mouth about it and doing a fair amount of complaining, I uh, finally had somebody, I can't remember who, um, that basically just said, um, you know, rather than complaining, why don't you spend some of your energy trying to make it better? <laughs> and uh -huh. so I, um, I ended up being on a couple of committees and then helping with conference and then uh, got to be, uh, was invited to uh, run for the position on the board. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and I enjoy it because it's, um, it's a way to be productive and really see what impact you can have. It's, it's, just, it's a lot of fun to see people from different, um, even though we're all librarians, we're all very different. We all have um, different experiences. We all come from different communities different backgrounds and um, and oftentimes have different ideas about the ways to make things successful. I think that the good thing is that at least at this point, um, we all of us on the board seem to agree on the direction we want to go. And yes. I think that that's been the case for at least a couple of years now that we've been, that we have been very positive about what we want to accomplish. And, um, and now we're getting to that point where we really agree on how we're going to accomplish it. And so that's really, it's really exciting. It's really empowering, I think, um, to be able to um, participate. And there's also, there's so many opportunities to participate because you can do it in a very small scale way or you can do it in a very grand scale way. Um, you know, you, you can come, you know, and just be, you know, in the audience at one of the programs and just, but you, or you could be a mentor, or you could be a mentee, or you could be, uh, you know, participate in one of the interest groups or be on a committee. I think that more than anything, it just really provides an opportunity to stay connected with the profession, to stay connected in things that are going on in, um, but not having to do with so much, um, it's not about professional development per se. I mean, although you do get that professional development from it, it's more through osmosis, I think. I don't think it's something that, it's not like taking a class. It's more about just being collegial and meeting people that have similar values and can be a support system for you when you're having a really tough day at work or in, uh, in the job market. Because, you know, it's really easy, I think, uh, because we're all of us so very busy and you know working you know up to our necks or eyeballs um, in our own communities in our own environment it, it's easy to get overwhelmed and lose sight of um, kind of what why you wanted to be in the profession in the first place and I think that that's one of the things that CLA can really do is is help you kind of keep that passion uh, for for why you did it to start with for me anyway. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. And thanks for taking the time to talk with everybody today. This video will be up on the YouTube page for anybody who wants to tune in afterwards. Um, and thank you again, Jennifer. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.